I've been paying pretty close attention to the discussion surrounding Once Justice 2, and the biggest thing I see is what is the difference between Once Justice 2 and Once Justice 1? It's an important question to ask, and I understand why a lot of people are asking it, but that's what I'm here to do. Point out all of the differences that I could spot between Once Justice 2 and Once Justice 1. First, and perhaps most importantly, the characters. Every character from Once Justice 1 is returning, and of the ones shown so far, they all have something new about them. And on top of the returning characters, there are five newly announced characters, with at least another 10 on the way according to the character select screen. Speaking of the character select screen, the new one takes that arcade style of the old one and turns it up to 11. I've seen some people complaining about this character select screen, but I love it. The bright color palette matches the comic book aesthetic the game is going for, and in the previous game, there was just a greenish blue background with spots. But in this game, there's a nice gradient effect that goes across the character select screen that I think makes a huge difference. The HUD has a bunch of updates as well. Instead of the previous straight lines that was representing each of the bars, we now have a bar that gets progressively wider the further it goes. The white text previously used to show the characters' names has been changed to match the aesthetic of the game, and I think it's a big improvement. The character profile pictures that were in the top right and left hand corners matched that greenish blue we were talking about before. Now there is a much more appealing red versus blue theme going on. The new transition between the different types of combos on the hit counter is a big upgrade, and the plus ultra bar is now literally a plus ultra bar. All of these changes contribute for a much more consistent aesthetic across the entire game. I won't waste your time going into each of the moves of all of the new characters because of course everything they have is new, but I'll mention them by name. Shigaraki has a new character slot with an entirely new moveset. This is a new character, not an update of a previous one. Mirio Togata, Tamaki, Najire, Mina, and Mineta have all joined the roster. Shoot Style Deku gets a new intro and has a new projectile kick. All Might also gets a new intro, a new red attack that we never saw somebody land unfortunately, and a new outro to wrap it all up. All For One also gets a new intro, at this point I'm starting to assume that every character gets a new intro, but we'll still mention them as we go. Katsuki Bakugo gets a new intro and a new projectile, which again, we never saw hit because Mirio Togata actually has an ability where he can walk through projectiles. Endeavor also has a new intro which I think is a big upgrade. Shota Todoroki gets a new costume design to match the source material and so does Darby. We never see gameplay of these characters but there's a couple characters with new costume designs. Denki Kaminari and Chiro both have new headgear and we can see that because of the character select screen and they were also revealed in the trailer that was released yesterday. Then there are other characters on the character select screen that have new adjustments to their render but not necessarily their costume. Those characters are Uraraka, Toga, All For One, Ida, and Bakugo. But this is because of the character select layout. Everyone is looking toward the center and the characters who are in the center look directly at the camera. So for example, in the previous character select screen, All For One was in the center and because of that, he was looking directly at the camera. But because now he's on the right hand side, he needs a new render that has him facing towards the center of the character select screen. The same can be said for the previously mentioned characters. Kirishima has a new costume and a new render for the character select screen and of all the UA students that aren't main characters, whatever that means, I expect Kirishima to receive the most changes out of any of them. So that's probably the explanation as to why his render was changed, even though his previous render was already facing towards the center. I thought about not even mentioning this in this particular video, but the game feels a lot faster. Everyone has less recovery on moves that used to have a lot of recovery, with perhaps the exception of Endeavor, who still appears to have incredibly long recovery, which makes sense because he's a projectile based character with a lot of area coverage, so you want him to have a high amount of recovery frames. But the gameplay as a result of these lower recovery moves will feel a lot faster, and I think that's a good thing. Another thing that for some reason people aren't talking about is the stages. This is huge. I won't go into detail about where these stages are from, because spoilers, but outside of the environments and the source material, they add unique gameplay situations. For example, this stage right here only has a single wall. Because of the way that high damage combo work in One's Justice, a lot of the gameplay on this stage will focus around you and your position relative to that single wall. It's a huge stage, so it won't be easy to drag your opponent to that area. Then there's another stage with three big things that I want to point out. First of all, is that it's incredibly small, so the focus will be on the combat rather than the positioning. Another thing that focuses on the combat rather than the positioning is the fact that there are no walls on the stage. Not a single one. You won't be able to wall splat on this stage at all, which is going to make combos more difficult, but if anyone ever wants to do a no wall combat
that tournament or just wants to play with no walls, this stage is awesome. But the thing that got me most excited about this stage was this insane stage destruction that was also shown off in the trailer. It effectively is a stage transition. When All Might does his auto combo that ends with a ground pound, the bridge is destroyed completely, taking the players to a new environment. I'm guessing this will trigger whenever a character would otherwise do a ground splat. Instead, they're just gonna kind of break the bridge and fall down into the new environment. There's also a new cinematic cutscene between Overhaul and Shigaraki that you can see at the end of the previous trailer. And I left this one for last because it's not really confusing confirmed that these are intros, but there are a few short animations of some of the characters in yesterday's trailer, and I believe that these are either intros or outros. So let's go over them. Shota Todoroki, Uraraka, Su, and Kirishima. Oh, and one quick side thing I also found in the trailer, there is new pieces of customization for Deku and Bakugo from their fight at the end of season three. There's also a new mechanic in My Hero Wants Justice 2. It's sidestepping. This is something that was requested in Wants Justice 1, and I didn't expect it to make it into Wants Justice too. Also, if you caught yesterday's video, it looks like there's going to be team plus ultra attacks and I'm so confident in that opinion that I'll go ahead and include it in this video about all of the new things inside of Once Justice 2. There it is. Every change I could find in Once Justice 2 based on the small amounts of gameplay that we have access to now. Considering how little gameplay we have and how little we know about the game, I think that this is a lot that has changed. On top of that, you also have to consider that they have a whole new story mode that will be coming and those 10 characters to fill out that character select screen, which I will have a video about that sometime this week. Today, I'm gonna catch up on the My Hero manga to make sure that my predictions are still on point, or at least I believe them to still be on point. I wanna thank you so much for making your way through this entire video. My name has been Bilbzy, and I'll be sure to see you in the next one.